Welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret. Colossians chapter 3 verse 22 is where we resume today's study. Get your Bible, open it up to Colossians chapter 3. We will begin in just a minute. Remember, the Scripture Verse by Verse website is found at thebibleversebyverse.com. Study all of God's Word with me using my audio Bible messages. All you have to do is choose, click, and listen from four complete series going through the whole Bible verse by verse. That's at thebibleversebyverse.com. <clears throat> and Father, we pray that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, Colossians three twenty two. Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh not with eye service as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. Servants here refers to employees today. Well, it, it would if there were servants around, bond servants or, or dent, indentured servants, it would apply to them too. But um, I would say, you know, for the most part, we're dealing with employees here. And God here has a word for all employees. He says, if you are an employee, then be loyal to your boss. Do what your boss tells you to do. Do it in a way that they expect it to be done. Because the employee who pays you deserves a full day's work for a full day's pay. And if you don't work hard, then yeah, you'll be in trouble with your employee, I'm sure. But you're going to be in even more trouble with God, because God is the one who's in charge. If somebody, if somebody agrees to work for a wage, then they should do it, and they should do it with all their heart, or they're stealing from their employee, they're sinning against God. If you are an employee, then work hard, all the time, and not just when your boss is watching, because your real boss is, is God, and he is always watching. And God wants us to work hard because of our love for him and out of a desire to please him. Do it for his glory, because notice 23, and whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. You know, I mentioned this in the past. The world revolves not around us. The world revolves around God. This is a theocentric universe. It's a Christocentric universe, a God-centered, a Christ-centered universe because the Bible says everything was made by him and for him. Now, if the Lord Jesus was the one who owned the place where you are employed and he personally gave you the job, and he met you at the door and showed you what he wanted you to do and how he wanted it to, you to do it, then as a Christian, you would work as hard as you possibly could by doing exactly what he wanted you to do. Right? I'm sure you would. Well, God says that's how, that's how he wants Christians to work. That's how he wants you to think of it and work accordingly. 24. Knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done, and there is no respect of persons. In other words, work as if Jesus is your boss. Work as if Jesus is watching every single thing that you do. Work as if he's going to inspect everything that you do because Jesus is watching you and he will inspect everything that you do. Pleasing your hu human employer is important, but everything should be done with the motive of pleasing Christ. Let's go into chapter 4. Masters, give unto your servants that which is just and equal, knowing that ye also have a master in heaven. Now, masters applies to employers. So God will tell us what he expects now from employers. And what does he expect? Well, he demands fairness and he demands justice. 
from all employers, meaning that employers should pay a fair wage, meaning the best wage that they honestly can pay. And they should do their best to make working dish conditions good because employers think of think of Jesus as being your employee. So give him good working conditions, give him a fair wage. And employers should see Christ as their employees. And they should treat their employees the way they would treat Jesus. That's what God expects. A man may be boss at work, and he may even own the company by God's grace. So he should remember that he has a boss who is in heaven and who he owes all things to. Verse 2. Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. God says don't give up when it comes to praying. And when you do get answers, don't forget to say thank you to God. God says continue in prayer. And prayer doesn't have to be formal because prayer really is just talking to our creator. And we can talk to God at any time that we want to. We don't need special words to do that. But when we talk to God, we should be respectful. Always. And according to this verse, we should pray all the time. Continue in prayer. Meaning that we should have an attitude of prayer at all times. Have an attitude of prayer at all times, which means we have to stay close to Christ, which means that we talk to Him throughout the day, whatever's on our mind. Just talk to God as if He is your constant companion, your best friend, because He is your constant companion and He is your best friend. So just talk to Him. Talk to Him. Don't ignore Him. Live with the realization that God is your constant companion. That's how we have an attitude of prayer. Three, praying also for us that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in bonds. Paul just, he just amazes me, always has. Paul's in prison. Not for doing anything wrong. He's in prison for preaching the gospel, for preaching the holy word of God. Yet, his prayer request is that God would give him many opportunities to preach the, the word of God. You say he's a glutton for punishment. No, he, he just wants to be faithful to God regardless of the cost. Paul doesn't care that it gets him into trouble or that wherever he preaches, it seems like somebody is going to stone him or beat him or whip him or throw him in jail. Like I heard one person say, when Paul entered a new town to minister there, he didn't check out the motel accommodations. He checked out the jail cells because that's usually where he ended up. So Paul wants to preach the word of God because he knows that it's right. And he loves the souls, even those who are always trying to hurt him. What a guy. What a man of God Paul was. And most of all, Paul loves Jesus Christ. And he wants to serve Jesus Christ with all his heart. And he knows that Jesus wants those souls, those mean-spirited, ugly souls. Jesus wants them to be saved. That's another reason Paul pre preached the word of God. Verse 4, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. Paul says, pray, pray to God for me, that I preach the word of God, that doors open up for me to preach the word of God, but that I want that I preach the word of God clearly. Well, it's the clear preaching and teaching of God's word that always gets Paul in trouble, but he wouldn't settle for anything less than that. And if you do as a preacher, shame on you. And if you support somebody who wants to tickle the ears of people and be popular with the world, double shame on you. You have no business supporting somebody like that. The Apostle Paul was suffering because he preached salvation through Jesus Christ. He was suffering because 
He preached the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the physical, bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ. He was suffering because he preached all of the words straightforward without watering any of it down. And he suffered because of the message that he taught because it was so crystal clear. And when that message, the message of God's word, is taught clearly, it never has been, it never will be, and it is not today a popular message, but it needs to be proclaimed anyway. The true message of God's word, whether you're talking about salvation through Jesus Christ and no one else, everybody else goes to hell. That's the message of God's word. That has never been a popular message. Neither has the rest of scripture. Never been popular with the masses and it never will be because it is a narrow message. It is a message that most people do not believe and don't want to believe, and it rubs them the wrong way. The message that Jesus Christ is the only Savior and that Jesus is the only way to heaven, and if you're in some other kind of religion, then you are headed to hell. That's not popular, but it's true. It's a message that is very narrow. And that's why it's unpopular. And the temptation is to water it down to avoid persecution. Mr. Billy Graham and Mr. Pastor of Crystal Cathedral out in California watered it down right on television, national television. Oh, people will be coming from all over the world who never heard about Jesus Christ. And they'll be saved. They'll be in heaven. They never heard of Jesus Christ, but they'll be in heaven. And then they stand there in front of the camera and pat each other on the back and talk about how wonderful it is and how big God is. And all the time, if you would remove their hair, you would see horns sticking out of both of them because that is devilish, demonic. It is a dastardly lie. But it sure does make them popular. How do you think that fella could afford that big old crystal cathedral? Why do you think Billy Graham had all those multiplied millions of followers? I know he preached good message, at least in his early years, but that's not a good message. That is compromising the truth. Oh, isn't he wonderful? Signed, Satan. If that steps on your toes and you turn me off, then your priorities are wrong because you care mo more about some evangelical icon then you do the written word of God, the clear word of God, then you care about Jesus, then you care about lost souls. So turn me off and go listen to some other modern evangelical if you want to. Don't waste my time. But you're going to find out one day that you made a big mistake. Five. Walk in wisdom toward them that are outside, redeeming the time. In other words, make the most out of the opportunities which God gives you to get out the Word of God. How do you make the most out of those opportunities? By always preaching the truth, no matter who likes it, who doesn't like it, no matter how popular or unpopular you might be, it doesn't matter. That's how you redeem the time. Or by supporting people who proclaim the Word that way. That's how you redeem the time. See, the main reason that we as Christians are left here on earth after we receive Christ is to help spread the word of God so that others may hear it. You better do it right or you're disobeying the command right here to redeem the time. Most people don't know Christ, but those of us who are Christians, we live and we work in the midst of all these people who are headed to hell. And that's the reason why it is so important for us to be holy, to accurately reflect the life of Jesus Christ, so that people see him in us. And that's also why we need to get out the word of God clearly without watering it down. Okay, study all of God's word with me at thebibleversebyverse.com to be a part of scripture verse by verse. Pray for me and God's word that immediately makes you a part of this ministry and I need your prayers and I'd appreciate that so much, more than I can say. When you take a break from studying with me 
at thebibleversebyverse.com. Go to the front page, click the donate button, and prayerfully give as the Lord may lead because that also makes you a part of this ministry. I appreciate that too. And until next time, Michael Moret for Scripture Verse by Verse. Thank you for studying with me. So long, everyone.